What is up all of my horror fanatics out there? Welcome back to Late Night Frights. I'm Late Night Frights horror leader, the Jay Sloan or Jordan, back here to do another video for you. And as always, guys, I want to thank everyone for tuning in this evening. Now, last week there were no videos posted, as many of you know, I'm sure. And I want to kind of explain the reason why. I'm not going to go too deep into it because I want to stick uh, to the subject of the video and get into the horror battle and not take up too much of your time. Uh, there were some personal issues uh, that led us not to be able to make videos, and for that we do apologize, but we are back on track, and uh, we're back doing horror battles this week, and next week we will be doing a theme. So the two horror films that I chose to battle are two classic slashers from uh, the 1980s, uh, obviously some of the best time, or the best, one of the best time periods in horror history was the 80s, especially for slasher films, and uh, these are just two great ones. And the first one here is My Bloody Valentine versus the prowler okay so before i dive into the battle you guys know how we do things here on late night frights first i'm going to be reviewing both films very briefly and then i will battle them to the death so i'm going to start off by reviewing my bloody valentine which was made in 1981 uh, i'm going to go look on the back here and tell you the director and some of the actors uh, the reason i'm doing this is because the director has a really weird last name and uh, i don't want to mispronounce it even though i probably will anyway uh, George Mahalka was the director of the film. Hopefully I pronounced that right. If not, I do apologize. Uh, starring Paul Kilman, Laurie Haler, and Neil Affleck. And uh, this is one of those early slashers. Like I said, 1981, the slasher genre, the slasher craze, really didn't pick up until the 80s. Uh, we had Halloween in 1978, Black Christmas 1974, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974, and a slew of different uh, individual films placed in between those years. But nothing until the 80s. That's when it really hit. That's when directors and uh, you know big investors with money really saw that a slasher film, a horror film, uh, was the way was you know the way to make their money and spend it wisely. So that's what they did. A lot of copycat films, and this is one of those that really didn't have a copy. It wasn't a copycat. It was something that was very unique and very original. Uh, putting a killer uh, in a Valentine's Day setting, which is really cool. The plot around this one uh, follows this tragedy that happened, I believe, 20 years prior to the events that are taking place currently in the film. And uh, this tragedy, uh, somebody got uh, murdered on uh, Valentine's Day, pretty much. And, you know, in that happening, somebody getting murdered on Valentine's Day... Uh, down in the minds of this small town and all these things are going on it has caused them for years not to be able to celebrate Valentine's Day uh, one you know year or one day 20 years later just so happens this day is Valentine's Day all the kids decide to have a big party not let anyone know uh, or at first they it's the officials are actually letting the party happen something happens uh, Harry Warden happens and or so they think it's Harry Warden uh, starts killing people off before they can do the Valentine's Day dance. So the officials say, hell no, it's not happening. We're not doing the dance. So the kids decide to have a little fun on their own, and uh, they go behind their back and do the dance near the mine. And things get really, really bad from there for a lot of the teens that are having fun at the dance on Valentine's Day. So that's pretty much all I'm going to say about the plot of the film. The acting is really good. Uh, it's a slasher, so the acting was not exquisite. It wasn't something that was going to win awards. But I really, really dig this slasher film. As you can see, I have my Bloody Valentine t-shirt. Uh, really badass design as well. Really, really love this one. Uh, always have since I was younger. I feel the kills are really, really good. Story's good. Uh, twist at the ending, uh, which you know some people might not be able to see right off the bat. Uh, but really good slasher nonetheless. Directing was good. Everything about this one... Uh, the shots that were taken were good. Some of the acting felt a little bit off, but it was 1981. It is a slasher film, and, you know, every actor in every film, you're not going to have a film with perfect acting all the way around. I, I haven't seen one. I've been alive almost 18 years. I have not seen, a, uh, whether it be a horror film, comedy, drama, action, no subgenre of any film have I seen a perfect movie. Uh in my opinion, there are some perfect movies, but I'm saying, critically saying, that there is a perfect movie. I don't know if it's possible that you can do that. I've not seen one that's been flawless from start to finish. There is, like I said, ones in my opinion that are great, and I see no flaws in, and a lot of that is due to nostalgia factors. Uh, like Halloween, I don't see flaws in Halloween. Mainly, I would say that's because of my huge love for the film. Uh, and it's just a fantastic film overall. But not to bring Halloween into this battle, all I'm saying is there are some iffy you know, acting in this, but there's also some really good acting 
Directing is good. Setting. I love the setting. Love the vibe. Love the Valentine's Day. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I about lost my voice there. Love the Valentine's Day uh, setting of the film. And really, you know, we've seen uh, Christmas horror films. We've seen Halloween. But seeing it on Valentine's Day was actually really, really cool. So that is my review over the original 1981 classic, My Bloody Valentine. Okay, now that I've reviewed My Bloody Valentine, I'm going to move on and review The Prowler, which was also made in 1981. This one is directed by Joseph Zito, who's also the director of my favorite Friday the 13th film, and that is Friday the 13th Part 4, The Final Chapter. This one is starring Farley Granger, Vicki Dawson, Christopher Gutman, and Cindy Weintraub. Now, hopefully I pronounced those names right. Uh, the last names, specifically. Seems like a lot of people have some very strange last names. Uh, if I didn't, I do apologize for that. But this is a very good slasher as well. Uh, stands right next to My Bloody Valentine, in my opinion, and I'm going to go over the plot, the direction, the cast, everything within the film. So, uh, this one's pretty much, uh, the beginning of it sets on a night, it's like early 40s, I don't know, 45, 46. Uh, these kids are having this dance, and uh, two of the kids, a uh, guy and a girl, walk away and kind of get you know hot and heavy. They're making out, they're about to have sex, it seems like. And the girl's name is Rosemary, uh, and she gets killed with a pitchfork, her and her boyfriend, her date, whatever you want to say. Then it skips like years later, 20 or 30 years later, uh, and they're having a dance, another dance, and it is said to be uh, like the killer 30 years later, the, the person who killed uh, the girl and her date uh, was a uh, war veteran that was suffering some PTSD, you know, this guy home from war who, you know, just couldn't handle being away and killed these two kids, and he was never found. He was always, it's been a mystery for 30 years. Well, they're having another dance, and uh, things start to happen. Kids start to die, and uh, this mystery soldier starts to appear again and uh, starts to kill off all of these kids, and no one really knows why. Don't know the reasoning behind it. Why is he doing this? Who is he? You will find out. That is the basic plot around the Prowler. Not to go any further into it, really interesting plot seeing a, a war veteran uh, being a serial killer, you know, being a slasher in a film. Uh, very interesting. Haven't really seen that before, you know, in My Bloody Valentine. It's a minor. It's set in a mine uh, top town, a very small town, and the kids uh, all a lot of the uh, a lot of the killings go on in a mine. So that was a really cool setting. This one was cool too. You're in a small town. And this war veteran is trying to kill you. That that's the basic plot around this one. It gets deeper towards the end, where we find out who he actually is. Uh, you know why he's doing these things, and you know the whole uh, the hidden secret uh, within the plot. So that's pretty much all I want to say about the Prowler's plot. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the direction by Joseph Zito. Like I said, who also directed Friday the Thirteenth Part Four, the final chapter. Great directing. I love the style. It is a very slow burn. It's not a huge, fast-paced slasher, although there is a kill in the first scene of the movie, uh, or, you know, like, first few scenes of the movie, there is a kill, so that was really cool. And all of the kills in this one, guys, bad-ass kills, well done. Uh, special makeup effects designer, uh, the person who did the special makeup effects was Tom Savini, one of the best in the business, if not the best, next to Greg Nicotero. And, uh, man, the effects were just badass in this one. Every kill... I waited for every kill because I knew they were going to be top-notch kills and they were going to look fantastic, and they did. Uh, directing, good. Makeup effects, great. Uh, acting was good. Uh, really bought uh, the chemistry between the sheriff and the teenage girl. Uh, you know, things going back and forth between them. So I really enjoyed the film overall, and uh, that's pretty much all I can say about it. That is my review over The Prowler. Okay, now that I've reviewed both films, it is time to battle them to the death, starting with round one. Round one, acting and directing. Which film do I think had better acting and overall better directing? Now, both films had good acting and good directing. It's going to be really hard to pick one. Uh, the directing in The Prowler, I feel, might have been a little bit better than the directing in My Bloody Valentine. Uh... Yeah, and the acting as well, maybe. I don't know. It's really, really difficult, guys. I really love both of these slashers. Um, yeah, I guess for round one, I'm going to have to go with The Prowler. I enjoyed the directing uh, from Joseph Zito, like who also directed Friday the 13th Part 4, the final chapter, as I said before. Uh, really liked the directing and really liked the acting in the film. Bought the chemistry between the uh, teen and the the 
sheriff's deputy, I guess you could say he wasn't really the full sheriff, but uh, the cop, the cop and the team, and everybody in it, you know, they sold their kills really well, uh, did them really good. Uh, not the killer, you know, not the slasher, but the person getting killed actually sold that death really well. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go with The Prowler for round one. Round two, Blood, Guts, and Gore. Which film do I think had better? Blood, Guts, and Gore. And My Bloody Valentine had some great kills. The Prowler had some great kills. Ah. Both kills. Uh, there, You know, there's some pitchfork kills in The Prowler. There is uh, some kills in My Bloody Valentine with the uh, mining pick, I guess you could say. Uh, not exactly sure what the the correct word for that is, but with the mining tool, there's a, some kills with that, some kills with the pitchfork and the prowler. Uh, knife kills, just, you know, environment kills in both films. Really cool. Let's, let's see. Hmm, hmm. Really like the effects by Tom Savini, man. Kills of blood, guts and gore was badass in the prowler. Uh, you know, when you've seen a kill in the prowler, you really felt like you earned to see that kill. Uh, great, great stuff. Uh, My Bloody Valentine, though, had some badass kills as well. Uh, once again, I'm going to go with the Prowler, guys. Special effects, uh, special makeup effects. The Blood, Guts, and Gore. Tom Savini is the best in the business. And uh, just did a great job with this one. Every kill, like I said, I was looking forward to because I knew it was going to be a badass kill. So the Prowler, once again, takes round two. Round three, story and originality. Which film do I think had a better story? M's overall more original. So you have both films, 1981. You have The Prowler, the uh, insane PTSD war veteran killing people. And in My Bloody Valentine, you have the Harry Warden uh, crazy miner uh, setting, you know, set in a Valentine's Day setting. And I'm going to have to go with My Bloody Valentine. I thought the story was very original. Uh, you know, one of the very early slashers in the 80s, and it did it right. The Prowler did it right, too. I just really liked the story in My Bloody Valentine just a little bit better uh, because the Valentine's Day setting, I felt, really helped it out a lot and the whole mining situation. So round three goes to My Bloody Valentine. Okay, round four, personal enjoyment and replayability. Which film do I personally enjoy more, and which film do I think has better replayability? Well, I've seen My Bloody Valentine more than I've seen The Prowler. Uh, although I enjoy both, I personally enjoy the My Bloody Valentine a little bit better than I did The Prowler, guys. Uh, just a classic one I grew up on since I was a kid. And, uh, yeah, so uh, My Bloody Valentine takes round four for having uh, better personal enjoyment and better replayability to me. It may not be the same to you, but, uh, yeah, to me, My Bloody Valentine takes round four. Okay, guys, so round five, we need a tiebreaker. We have two, and we have two. Which film is better? You know, which film do I think is better overall? Which film did I go into knowing it was going to win the battle? Which film do I love more than the other? And just a little bit, guys, My Bloody Valentine is winning this battle. It takes the last round. I really, really love My Bloody Valentine. I have since I was a kid. And uh, I just knew that it was going to win going into this. I knew The Prowler was definitely going to get some points because I love this one as well. These are two 80 slashers that go hand in hand, much like The Burning uh, and tons of other slashers that you can watch. These two are great. I liked both of them. Some people are going to have different opinions. Some people won't like The Prowler. Some people will not like My Bloody Valentine. But uh, there is some enjoyment to be had out of both of these cheesy, campy slashers. Both are awesome. Check both of them out. But to me, My Bloody Valentine wins this. Okay, so I want to thank everyone for tuning in and watching my battle over My Bloody Valentine versus The Prowler. Please comment down below and let me know which horror film you like better. I'm really curious to hear everyone's thoughts and opinions on these two slashers. Uh, stay tuned, guys. Tomorrow, Chris Brock will be battling two horror films of his choice, and that will continue throughout the week with all of our members. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Next week, we will be having a new theme Really, really awesome when we have planned, so stay tuned for that. I'm the Jay Sloan. You just watch Late Night Frights. Comment, subscribe, and as always, guys, keep it horror. Peace.